Hi, my name is Janet Thomas. I'm a product manager at The Seaman Company, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the next episode of our corporate podcast, Network Connections, the podcast about information, communication, technology, presented by Seaman. Today on our show, I am pleased once again to be joined by Dave Medeiros, Network Cabling Designer for The Seaman Company. It's great to be with you again, Dave. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Jen. It's great to be on uh, on the show again with you. Um, it was uh, a great experience last time, and uh, I'm excited about uh, doing this again. Excellent. So am I. Let's uh, get started. So as I mentioned, this is our second appearance on Network Connections, and before we jump into our topics for today, I'm happy to report to you that our first episode that we did together, which was Episode 7, How to Protect Critical Connections in Unforgiving Environments, has over 9,700 views on YouTube. So Dave, tell me, how does it feel to be a world-renowned celebrity? Well, I'll tell you, you know, I've really had to work on some of my disguises sneaking out of the house and all the uh, harassing phone calls I've been getting from the Kardashians about, you know, beating their show ratings is, uh, you know, I can deal with it though, it's all right. (laughs) So you have been successful in avoiding the paparazzi over these last four months, Dave? Oh, yeah. You know, they're jumping out of the bushes and, you know, I think they're tourists, but evidently they're not. I'm showing up in all the tabloids now. So, <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and this episode probably won't won't help that, but we'll uh, we'll we'll persevere. Yeah, well, you know, that's the part of the you know price of fame. So absolutely. Well, your celebrity is only going to be enhanced after today. So let's shift focus towards environments where it is advisable to use ruggedized connectivity. And let's understand why. So um, when we talk about uh, connectivity, Dave, in outside sporting arenas or entertainment you know, venues, I know that there are you know, several types of applications, whether it be uh, Wi-Fi or point of sale kiosks. What would be, you know, some areas of concern for connectivity in those spaces? Oh, sure. That's that's a great example. Um, and uh, so you could have a rather unique um, environment with a sports venue of that type. Um, you know, many people would think when you have a stadium that it may be an enclosed environment, but in actuality, a lot of it is usually exposed to the elements, and that will include um, moisture, so you're going to get rain, um, temperature swings. You can have large temperature swings, really hot, really cold. Um, you can have snow, precipitation, and not to mention just uh, kind of getting, you know, beat up a little bit as, uh, you know, people are large crowds, the kiosks are plugged in and unplugged, that type of thing. So you want to be careful that you have a product that uh, w- would be able to address what you could run into with these. Yeah, so clearly not a real hospitable in, environment in, in many ways. So um, what types of ruggedized products would you advise people to use in those types of uh, situations, Dave? Well, I think in this type of environment, what we'd really you know, be looking at is uh, ruggedized copper patch cords, uh, the corresponding ruggedized outlets that would go with them. Um, you would have uh, some type of a ruggedized surface mounting box or uh, a, a, you know, a stainless steel faceplate. And, um, you know, outside of that, you'd really want to look at dust caps for both the uh, the plug side and for the outlet side. So when you disconnect these kiosks or, you know, mobile pay stations uh, that you have the ability to, to cap off that outlet when it's not being used because it would still be vulnerable to uh, these conditions. So, yeah, good points, Dave. Um, excellent. So what type of ruggedized connectivity, um, you know, what is it specifically about the connectivity that makes it? better suited for these physical areas? Well, you know, it's uh, the the ability, number one, to seal out the outside environment. So that would, in in most cases, people would go to moisture immediately. So if you think about it, if it's raining, if the rain has no way of getting inside of the outlet or onto the patch cord, then there's not going to be an issue of possible shorting out or corrosion or anything like that. Um, and, uh, you know, number two, if you think about uh, from a, a physical point of view, um, y- these environments, you, you have a, a cart that's a kiosk. It gets moved out at time of sale and put back somewhere when, when you're done selling, you know, whether it's T-shirts or it's food. 
And, you know, if anyone's ever seen me go for nachos, it, it can get pretty violent. So, you know, it's good that you have a very robust um, connector there. But in all seriousness, you could bring one of these carts out and, uh, you know, brush the outlet against the wall as you're sliding it out. And a typical outlet, you could actually break the outlet. Um, whereas with the ruggedized, you're going to have something that can take the beating. So. Yeah, a lot of great um, input there. Thanks, Dave. So, so I guess you know issues that could be present if we'll say typical connectivity is used in these spaces is you could have uh, penetration of you know water or, or dust or other you know debris, um, and just the fact that repeated plugging in and unplugging and impact to other physical hard surfaces really could cause problems. Yeah, and you know, some other things too that people might not realize is you're going to have exposure to sunlight. It'd be direct sunlight being out in this venue. Um, sunlight can break plastic down, so it has a, the ability to actually start to break the uh, the actual composition of the plastic down over time with um, a ruggedized solution that's geared to be outside, um, specifically with a Velox um, uh, uh, construction in the plastic uh, glass fill. It's very resistant to uh, ultraviolet and uh, it, it won't break down in an outside environment. And, um, you know, something else which I should have mentioned before too is you may have instances where it, copper isn't going to just be able to, to meet all of your distance needs. And at that point, you may have to introduce um, a ruggedized solution that is en encompassing uh, fiber optics so you can reach farther out, which in a stadium situation, that could very well be the case. A, a football stadium is very large, for example, and you may have to reach the outer uh, sides of the ring across the stadium, which would exceed what you would you'd be able to handle with uh, uh, capable copper there. So, And, uh, you know, it, one thing to mention, too, is we had mentioned the water ingress, as you said. Um, it... it these systems should have, for example, an IP67 rating, which means that you can submerge this in a, uh, a liquid for one half hour at one meter without the water ingressing into the into the system. So that is a, a great way to look at it. Um, you know, when, when people say IP67, a lot of people might not be able to correlate that. But if you look at it that way, it's, uh, you know, if you can survive temporary flooding to one meter, you're definitely going to be able to survive a rainstorm or, uh, you know, high pressure wash as you're cleaning off the bleachers or the, uh, the seats. So it, it gives you a lot of options for that environment. So a lot of excellent points. Uh, thanks a lot. Let's shift focus a little bit. Um, we'll move from more of an outside sort of situation to an indoor situation. So Dave, in terms of, um, utilizing ruggedized connectivity within, let's say, uh, an operating room or an emergency room, um, that would require, uh, let's say, a chemical or a bleach washdown. Um, what specifically would be the areas of concern in those spaces? That's a great example also. So now we have a bit of a contrast where we were talking about ruggedized outside and we were dealing with combating um, the environment. In, in a hospital environment, we now have something that's uh, – could have a different damaging effect and a cause and effect. And uh, what we, we've seen in the past is uh, in emergency rooms and in operating rooms, it's, it's very uh, prevalent to use a bleach washdown as a disinfectant. Um, the bleach is very aggressive on uh, you know, biological contamination, and it really does a good job of, of sterilizing an environment, especially after an operation has happened or a patient's left to the emergency room. But one of the downsides is that if it gets into an exposed outlet, for example, that um, bleach is extremely corrosive and can start to corrode the, uh, the connectivity, basically. And what would happen is you could have a failure that wouldn't happen right away, but it could happen at a most inopportune time. And really in a hospital, any time that you're with a patient is the wrong time for something to fail. So, You're right. Some pretty high stakes there, Dave, in terms of areas that you just don't want to risk, you know, exactly. for, good, for good patient care. So in, in those instances, Dave, you know, what types of ruggedized products would you want to deploy in those spaces so that you don't run the risk of, you know, impacting patient care. Right. That's uh, in, in that, uh, the, the funny thing is that we're talking about the same product set that we were talking about for the outside purposes at the stadium, but now it, it, the versatility of a ruggedized product lends itself to be in different environments, but it would be the same type of product. So we're still talking about a ruggedized copper patch cord, 
Uh, that would be connecting, for example, uh, you know, uh, some type of instrumentation cart to uh, a nurse's station, possibly through the uh, a wall outlet. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have the ruggedized outlets that you'd actually engage these patch cords into. Um, you're going to have the stainless steel face plates. You probably wouldn't need to be as aggressive with a, um, you know, a, a NEMA rated box or the uh, the IP67 surface box because you're not going to submerge this in temporary flooding. But the uh, stainless steel face plate would be sufficient to seal out any high pressure washes. And of course, you're going to want to go with the dust caps because eventually you will detach and you don't want to have an open outlet to get exposed to the wash down. So some of the similar products there. And I think you, you know, alluded this to uh, to this already, Dave. Just in terms of if somebody were to, let's say, use a, a typical plastic faceplate, a uh, typical, you know, Cat Six A outlet that that would be used in other uh, more benign types of environments. If if those things were deployed, let's say, in a in a OR where washdowns are happening, you know, I guess what could happen. So in in those environments, if it was a standard outlet, you would have. Um, you know what even if you had a patch cord inside of a standard outlet that was a non ruggedized outlet when you washed it down with the bleach um, sterilization solution it would actually start to to flow into the outlet and um, it may not even take direct contact with the uh, the metal pins inside but the vaporous nature of a bleach uh, solvent is going to basically have fumes that will start attacking and corroding over time so it may not happen today it may not happen tomorrow but maybe six weeks down the road the pins corrode all the way through and basically they short it out um, or in possibly if you had some type of a, a, a solution that's in there even before it corroded it, it could cause them to short you know it would short to the pin next to it with the the moisture of the the solution right. um, so it you know it really it, it could things could go very bad with that and something else that many people probably wouldn't realize but would just go to lend itself to the durable nature of the Velox plastic that a ruggedized outlet would be made out of is if you've ever been into a hospital they use a lot of carts and these carts um, basically uh, sit flush against the wall they, they move them in the halls they push them against the walls in the operating room if it was to hit a standard outlet that it was made out of you know regular commercial grade plastic you could very possibly shatter the outlet and push it back into the wall whereas with the ruggedized product it's so robust that you're not it, you're not going to be able to you know damage it with impacts so excellent yeah again all great uh points dave and, and thank you for really um explaining it to, to that extent uh, i'm sure our listeners have uh, really gotten a lot out of it so thank you so much um, before we go, though, um, we're going to once again hit you with a couple of lightning round questions, Dave. Oh, boy. <laughs> and so we just request that you, you answer with the first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Knowing that you are a big fan of the Star Wars franchise, if you had a chance to captain either the Millennium Falcon or the Starship Enterprise from the Star Trek franchise for just one day which would you choose and why oh boy that's a tough one i know we you know that's that's crossing lines too with star wars fans and star trek fans so but we'll try to uh take a look at it i the millennium falcon i think would be uh just incredibly fun because it'd be like a sports car zipping around um but on the flip side the this the enterprise with its food replicators the fact i would have unlimited uh pizza nachos pulled pork sandwiches uh you know at the push of a button would really be important there so that's uh, a tough call i don't know <laughs> absolutely absolutely especially if you had uh, chewbacca as your co-pilot there in the falcon right i mean it's that would oh make yeah it even tougher that would be very tough yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sure you would agree though in the, both of those uh starships there probably would be a need for that ruggedized connectivity i would imagine especially in the kitchen yes <laughs> <laughs> Okay, switching gears a little bit. Um, are you happy, Dave, that, that Tom Brady and his Buccaneers team won the Super Bowl last year or earlier this year? Or uh, is, is that not really so uh, important to you or well, any I, feelings on that? Yeah, I, I, I was happy to see that he uh, he got the win there because I, I kind of feel like they uh, tried to put him out to pasture a little earlier than uh, – they should have, and uh, it, you know, I, I think they ended up regretting that as he was holding the trophy there. So, um, <laughs> it's 
you know, just don't count the old guys out too soon, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I think it was a, a great achievement for, for him and, and, and his team. So, and, uh, and one last question, Dave, if you could have dinner with anyone that's either living or dead, who would it be and why? Oh, that one, yeah, you know, quite honestly, I think it would be Bill Murray because, uh, you know, he's an interesting guy. I'd love to hear some stories off of, uh, you know, Caddyshack and his other great movies. And, and from what I understand, he, he has a habit of just popping in at people's dinners anyway, randomly. So I, I think, uh, you, you know, that that's one thing that, it, who knows, it could happen. You could just all of a sudden turn around and he's there. So that, that may be something that is a real life uh, event that could happen. So. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. May, may have to just keep an extra setting handy there for, for the dinner table in case he does show up. That's right. <laughs> Well, Dave, thank you so much. You survived another lightning round. And thank you so much for being a good sport and for joining us today. Oh, anytime, Janet. It's, uh, it's great being on the podcast and uh, it's very enjoyable. That's all for today's episode of Network Connections presented by Seaman. Thanks for listening and thank you, Dave, for joining me. Make sure you subscribe to the Seaman Company YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Future episodes will continue to feature semen experts that will deliver valuable insight into the ICT industry. From all of us here at the Semen Company, we hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy. See you next time. <music>